So we we do see, we have seen in the past uh, an increase in the Earth's temperature. The IPCC will say that's consistent with it all being driven by human influences, but they allow for the possibility that there's natural variation in there. So that's just on the temperature. What they say about extreme weather events is that apart from things directly associated with the temperature, like record high temperatures or heat waves, um, you don't see much trends globally. There's, you know, uh, drought, uh, hard to see a trend, hurricanes or tropical cyclones, hard to see any trend at all over a century. Maybe there's a little thing we can talk about afterward. Uh, sea level rise, uh, proceeding at the rate of one foot a century globally, different locally, we can talk about that a little bit if you want. Mid-latitude severe storms and so on, not much going on at all. It's hard to find trends. Doesn't mean that the trends aren't there, but they've just not emerged from the data. Okay, so I wanted- The IPCC- oh, Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna talk a little bit about the IPCC. Yes, please do. So this is, this is an exercise carried out by the UN roughly every six or seven years. They convene a thousand scientists from countries around the globe who are supposed to survey, assess, the scientific understanding of human-induced climate change. That's really important because they focus on, you know, what might be attributable to humans as opposed to natural climate change, mm -hmm. which is uh, an important part of the story. And so they split up into various working groups, write very detailed 1,000, 2,000 page long reports that actually, in my opinion, do a pretty good job of assessing the science. Mm. Those reports are then packaged, if you like, or summarized into summaries for policymakers, where the scientists don't have as much of a hand in writing those summaries. The governments intervene quite a bit. And when you compare the summaries, which is what serious people would read if they're not climate scientists, to what's actually in the reports, there's lots of disconnect. And I can give you some examples some point. And then, of course, you get the media, where you have journalists who don't know very much at all about the science. They're on a climate beat in the newspaper, and so they have to uh, provide climate stories that catch the attention. And then you've got the politicians who grab onto all of this. And so at the end of this long game of telephone, what comes through is very little reflective of what the actual science says.